I have been testing the MacBook Pro M3 Max on this channel in music production software in different DOS, Ableton Live, Logic Pro, Reaper, Bitwig, uh, and that's basically those DOS I've been testing. The results have been not bad. The, it's, it's a really good computer, but it seems like there's some strange things happening in Ableton Live and these M3 MacBook Pros. So I thought we could take a look at a one minute short from the artist uh, Kai Tracid, where he have been comparing the 16 core M3 Max and the 14 core M3 Max using my testing project, which you can find in the link below. Yeah, let's take a look what he says here. The Apple M3 Max 14 core CPU beats the Apple M3 Max 16 core CPU if it comes to Ableton. And I don't know why. As you can see, this is the 16 core CPU and this is the 14 core CPU. And I go to the project, 160 tracks, and I play it. No crackles. And I play it on the 16 core CPU. It's not able to play 160 tracks. Explain me why. Yeah, that's a really good question. So I can open the project uh, on my my 16 core M3 Max here and we can just test it again because I think this is really strange. Let's see what kind of results I get when I try this again. Here we have the project. I'm not really sure how many samples he was running uh, when he was testing it here. Let's see if we know. Yeah, I'm not sure. But here I have 144 tracks. It's the same thing he was testing here. And uh, let's see how that works. So I get crackles, but I am screen recording. I am uh, having Chrome open as well. But if I remove it to 140 tracks. Let's open up Activity Monitor here and let's take a look at the CPU uh, usage and the CPU log. On the top here we have the efficiency cores, so we have four efficiency cores and we have uh, the performance cores here. Let's take a look. A little crackle there, but I think that can be attributed to the screen recording, I guess. And as for settings here, we are running 48 kilohertz and 512 samples. So if I set this to, let's say, 128, and see what happens. Because that's actually what Ableton are uh, recommending. As low sample size as you can. But as you can hear, that is obviously not working. Try 256. When he is testing the 14 core M3 Max, it can play more tracks. But that computer is supposed to be lower spec. This computer is really expensive and the, the 14 core is well, expensive of course, but it's less expensive. So he's asking, why is this? Well, I came over a post on Reddit. I don't know if this is true or not. I will link it to in the description below. Anything you hear on the internet, you should take with a grain of salt. Even what I am saying, because I can say wrong things, I strive to not do that. But uh, yeah. So here is uh, someone saying a warning to those considering upgrading to Apple M3 Max. Ableton is sporadically performing catastrophically worse on the M3 Max than on my M1 Max and Intel based MacBook Pros. And this is due to the fact that the efficiency cores are being randomly introduced into the processing pipeline. So a support ticket that is made on this subject revealed that since the M2 came out, when the buffer size is configured to be less than 256 samples, the live scheduler engages the performance cores. However, when the buffer size is adjusted to 256 samples or higher, the live scheduler adopts a dual core strategy. It utilizes both performance and efficiency cores in tandem. Most modern production projects, they are heavy with effects and plugins. 
can't be run in Ableton at a buffer size of 128 or 256 samples because the playback turns into nothing but static and dropouts at that tiny buffer size. While the M3 chips can run more threads, the clock speeds are not faster than the 10 year old Intel chip clock speeds. So every track in Ableton is configured to a single thread. If that thread is assigned to an efficiency core on the M2 or M3, your Ableton Live session will just stop working even if you are on stage in front of a thousand of people. So when Ableton is run at a buffer size of 124 or 248, it usually starts by running just fine, just like Logic does. But at some point, uh, maybe a minute or a half into a live session, when an efficiency core is introduced, the whole project comes crashing down and is unusable until Ableton is fully restarted. Switching to a buffer size of 128 samples for a minute and then switching back to 2048 does not resolve the issue and the user has to completely shut down Ableton and reopen everything to regain full performance core efficiency. And he says that this is going to be a huge problem for Ableton if it doesn't get sold fast because more and more people are going to start to use the M3 machines. Well, are they <laughs> if they are watching these videos? Mass abandonment of Ableton? Well, I wouldn't really be that dramatic actually. And he says developers are supposed to be able to program in Affinity with performance cores on Mac OS we need a way to enforce only performance cores on Ableton projects or sessions, but this approach to be done on a programming level. Ableton programmers need to introduce a patch to engage the performance cores and eliminate the efficiency cores from the pipeline. We have some answers here and we have this extremely excellent video from uh, James Sun. He has also done some testing with the uh, MacBook Pros and he's really great. He has been... <laughs> These are the kind of testing videos I strive to do. I don't have the time or, or energy to. These are really great. So watch his videos about these Macs. Someone saying here that the devs at Ableton should be aware and looking for a solution and, and things like that. And it's been an issue since the M2 came out a year ago, brought it out to the support team and they just changed the subject or say a buffer size of less than 256 samples which basically means don't use any plugins or significant effects. I am not a developer, I'm not a programmer. I don't have any inner say or, or view into either Ableton or either into Apple. But one thing I know about Apple is that they are, they can be diff really difficult to work with. If they have decided for something, they are almost unable to change their stance on things. If I am a developer, I'm not sure how easy it is to develop for these uh, M1, M2 or M3 chips. Maybe the issue lies there. Maybe the issue lies there where Ableton don't have developers that are that fully versed into, I mean, Apple's ecosystem. Who knows? Because when Apple releases new CPUs, people need to learn new frameworks, new ways of of programming for these CPUs and that takes time and resources. These are just uh, things I'm thinking about. I'm not sure if these are true, but uh, it's probably a combination of uh, things like that. Kai Trasid was trying my project on uh, the Macs he has there and he was uh, confirming basically what this person in this Reddit thread was also saying. So we now have two data points that are kind of uh, confirming the same issue. I'm not uh, complaining on either Ableton or Apple. I think it's it's probably not the easiest thing to, to program for. And I think if we give them some time, eventually this will be cleared up. I think that Ableton with time will be able to utilize the performance of these uh, computers sometimes. I mean, they have to. <laughs> As for the M maxed out M3 Max for music production in Ableton Live, well, you have seen the videos here, you have seen the videos from me, you have seen the videos from Kai, seen the, from uh, James. If you are going for the best performance per money, I don't necessarily think I would get the M3 Max. I use the computer for other things, I use it for video editing and uh, other stuff as well as in addition to music production. So that's one of the reasons I, I have this computer. I get a lot of comments. People are asking if this computer is good, if this is good for music production. And you know, I can't answer all of those questions. I mean, it depends on what, what your preferences are, but it could be uh, wise to maybe go the used route, try to find an uh, M1 Max or an M2 or an M1 Pro or M2 Pro with uh, the most possible performance cores and you can probably get a good deal there and especially if you use Ableton Live 
uh, as it looks now at least having some issues tapping into all of the performance you have there in the uh, arm chips i guess this uh, adds to more confusion i apologize for that but i just wanted to make a quick video talking a little bit about this because i don't want to kind of mislead anyone i'm really just reporting what i see and uh, in today's climate things are changing fast maybe in two or three months we have uh, ableton live 12 well where all of these problems are fixed but i mean i uh, think that uh, ableton also should take care of ableton live 11 and fix that and uh, yeah i don't know uh, we'll see what happens uh, in the future i hope this helps take care and uh, i see you in the next one goodbye